What's up, YouTube? So today is Sunday, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. It's a beautiful day. Um, so I thought today I would give you a tour of my lab. It's just very casual. Uh, I got a couple projects going on. I've got parts ordered and boards ordered, so hopefully next week I'll have another project video. But in the meantime, I thought I would show you guys my lab. So before getting into it, I wanted to talk a little bit about my lab philosophy. Um, so I think that your physical space is always a direct reflection of what's going on in your head. Um, somebody who has really messy, disorganized thoughts usually has a really messy and disorganized workspace, which is fine. Um, everybody is different and everybody functions under different levels of organization. Um, but just working with different people and understanding their workflows and their habits has led me to believe that your space truly reflects what's going on in your brain. So based on that, I like to keep my space fairly organized. Um, I just find it to be a lot more conducive to workflow when you know where things are and you don't have to waste time looking for tools. It allows you to progress through a project or a problem uh, just much more fluidly. So I try to set up my workspace in a way that uh, I know where everything is. It makes sense to me, at least. I'm, I'm the only one that works in here, so I don't have to worry about uh, collaborating with other people in this space. The second important thing about a lab space, I think, is you need to set it up in a way that you just enjoy being in there. Just aesthetically, um, having plants or posters on the wall of things that you like. The goal is to make it a space that you enjoy being in. So this is my main workstation. This is where I do any kind of CAD work, programming, project research, um, basically anything that involves computer simulations is all done right here. And as you can see, I like having a lot of monitor real estate. I think that's also important. Being able to see things being able to see like everything that's going on without having to flip through a bunch of tabs uh, just makes work a lot easier, it makes me more productive, it makes me get things done faster, ultimately. Um, so on the widescreen is where I'll usually do CAD, and the nice thing about the widescreen is I can have the schematic and the board layout up at the same time, so I could be doing cross-probing between the schematic and the board. Um, these two monitors up here, I can have one dedicated to a web browser, so either looking at um, parts on DigiKey or data sheets or just doing Google searches. If I'm programming, I can be looking at Stack Overflow or whatever. Um, and then I dedicate this monitor to just chat. So email, Slack, Telegram, um, it's really all the chat programs I use. And then I've got an old monitor repurposed up here, which just has my calendar and uh, the weather, the time. It's more just like a smart display. Let's go check out the bench. So this is my electronics bench. This is where I do any kind of board level work, whether it's bringing up a new design or troubleshooting existing designs, um, t testing, it's all done here. I'll mention just a few things. Um, always use an ESD mat. I know a lot of people are like, parts are so cheap, I don't need to use an ESD mat. And you may be right, but the thing that's not cheap is your time. So if you damage a part, um, you're gonna have to replace it. You're gonna have to waste time figuring out that you damaged it, because it's not always obvious if a part was damaged by ESD. So if you value your time, you'll get an ESD mat. Microscope is super essential nowadays. Uh, there's a lot of parts that you just really can't see. I would say anything below half a millimeter pitch or um, below 0603 is where you're gonna wanna start using a microscope. You're just really not gonna be able to see very well with your eyes. The rest of the equipment I have here is pretty standard. I've got a couple lab power supplies, uh, a fixed power supply that does high current, a bench DMM, uh, this is my favorite piece of equipment that I use the most. It's a Keith Lee DAC 6510. Um, logic analyzer, it's a Salier. Super convenient. If you guys have ever used one, you would probably never go back to any other logic analyzer. Um, 
very very basic oscilloscope, 100 megahertz. Dual soldering station, reflow station. So this is one piece of equipment that I recently upgraded. And the reason that I upgraded it was because I was working with a eight layer board that had a lot of copper pores and my $60 Amazon reflow station just couldn't remove parts because the copper was sinking so much heat away. This particular station is amazing. I haven't had any issues with it yet. It's the user interface is super easy to use. It's the quick 861 DW. Uh, I'm not gonna go into detail because there's probably a lot of videos on YouTube that go over this. All right, so next is my prototyping fabrication bench. This is where I've got my 3D printer and a mill. Um, I use my printer a lot. I don't use my mill as much as I thought I would, but it does come in handy occasionally. Um, I think the big disadvantage is that it can really only do a one layer board. Um, you can do two layers, but then you've got to somehow run your own vias. There's a few techniques for doing that, but ultimately it just takes way too long. And given how cheap and fast you can get boards, even four or six layer boards today from some of these Chinese houses, um, it just doesn't make sense to, do, to, to mill your own unless you're just doing it for fun, which I do occasionally. So this is my collection of books. Knowledge. Um, I don't keep them in my garage. Here in my garage. A lot of people will come in here and ask me if I've read all these books and no, I haven't. I probably haven't read half of the content in these books. Um, but then again, have you read all of Google? Probably not but you still use Google. And the idea is just to have a collection of information that's available to you at some point in the future. You never know when you'll need it. I still think books are very relevant. Um, there's a lot of information on the internet and the internet has it, its advantages in that it's constantly being updated and people are constantly sharing new ideas. But uh, certain subjects don't change like um, electromagnetism and having a book where the information is condensed and refined and reviewed um, is often a better source of information than going to a forum on some random web page or you know wikipedia is great but the depth isn't always there so with these books i generally i read all the table of contents i maybe read the introduction to each chapter just to get an idea of what information I have available to me. And if I'm working on a project in the future, um, I know that I can go back and find some information in these books. So that completes the tour of my lab. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This lab has grown with me over the past five years or so, and it's come to not just support my hobby, but also my career. In the future, I plan to make a video on how to get started with an electronics lab. So if that's something you'd be interested in, be on the lookout for that. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.